Hello and welcome to this UK IBC video blog looking at the impact of the financial professional service sector and what happened recently in the union budget in India. My name is Chris Hayes. I'm a chartered accountant and one of the directors at UK IBC. It was always going to be difficult for the finance minister to take any substantial changes in the budget given the current global pandemic that is taking place and the uncertainty that that has caused. Therefore, the real focus of the budget was always going to be on healthcare. But we we're also particularly delighted to see the addition of some much needed infrastructure investments that were announced. All, of course, without the need or without increasing any real taxation in India, which is much welcomed by the investment community. Looking at the, fan the budget from a financial professional services lens, we were delighted to see the increase in the FDI rates for the insurance sector, rising from 49% to 74%, and the announcement that the Indian owned and controlled legislation is being updated to allow foreign ownership of insurance companies in India. Although we note that the budget referred that safeguards would be put in place in foreign owned insurance companies, and we await to see what that detail will mean. It was also good to hear the announcement of the further disinvestment by the government in this sector and a confirmation of the IPO of LIC, one of the dominant insurance companies, public sector insurance companies in the insurance sector, uh, and the announcement that there will be a further disinvestment from the government from the insurance sector. The announcement of the Development Infrastructure Institute was very much welcomed and will help to attract foreign direct investment via sovereign wealth and private finance into the infrastructure projects and more importantly will help to build a pipeline of investment ready projects for those foreign investors to look at. The creation of the asset reconstruction company will help to recapitalize the banking system. You'll remember the UK did something very similar to this after the financial, the financial crisis with the creation of the ring fenced bad banks built to take non-performing assets and loans and then disposing of them by our alternative investment funds. From a global business point of view, it was good to see, as I mentioned, no direct tax increases, but there are still some huge disparities on the tax system. One area that we've been advocating for change for has been around the tax disparity that happens where global corporations, foreign owned corporations pay a tax rate of 43% compared to domestic companies at just 25%. Globally, the practice is always being tax parity. And therefore, we would have hoped to see India align themselves to this global benchmark. But what does this mean to uh, investors? I'm delighted to be joined on this video blog by Nandita Tully, Managing Director of Thomas Lloyd Group, a key investor in India with solar projects, investments in Maharashtra, Telangana, Karnataka and Uttar Pradesh. Uh, welcome Nandita. Um, as a significant investor in India, uh, what do you think of the recent budget? Hi Chris, thanks. It's a pleasure to join you on this video blog. Um, so in our view, this budget is all about growth. Um, India is a growth story after all. However, growth slumped below 4% pre-COVID and many investors, including ourselves, wondered if India's long-term potential growth had, had been impaired as prior to COVID, we were all looking at a 65 to 7% long-term real G GDP growth. But I think therefore this budget um, focused on the aim of getting real GDP growth back up to the pre-COVID 7% levels. India needs its nominal growth to grow as, at a much higher rate than its, than its cost to interest. So the government is responding by targeting spending and has moved away from the fiscal conservatism of the past few years. The fiscal deficit this year will increase, which is a big departure from 2018, and the government will borrow more in financial year 2021 rather than carrying surplus cash into the next fiscal year. Sectors targeted, as you mentioned, for the spend are healthcare and you know, significant amount in infrastructure. Additionally, state governments are allowed to borrow more than anticipated. 
This is what Gamuse de was, said Thomas Lloyd, as often the balance sheets of state governments are severely stretched and cannot pay their dues. The finance minister also announced increased funding for states subject to good performance of those states. Production linked incentives that will be paid out on time are welcome initiatives. For our particular projects in Telangana, Karnataka and Uttar Pradesh, this is really good news. So the other aspect to the budget, which you already mentioned, was the FDI limits for insurance to be relaxed from the 49 to the 74 percent. And of course, the further move to di um, disinvest, privatise and monetize government owned assets in order to attract foreign capital. Of course, th these sort of things have been in past budgets as well. But the government really needs to follow through with the, the execution of the disinvestment. Fantastic. And from a Thomas Lloyd point of view, was there, was there anything in the budget that you would have liked to have seen that wasn't announced? Well, to be honest, Chris, actually, not really. I mean, we were really surprised at this budget and how much of a departure it was from the usual stance of, of you know, fiscal conservatism and the government actually wanting to spend more money. All right. And, and as a significant investor in India, then, what, what does India need to do to attract more investors like yourself? Obviously, if it's going to try to achieve that five trillion dollar economy, then it does need those investors. Is there anything more that yeah. you would like to see the Indian government doing? And, and absolutely. I mean, we always talk about this big number of India becoming a five yeah. trillion economy and attracting investors. But actually, what practically makes a real difference is the ease of doing business. Yeah. And I know the government has worked very hard on this over the past few years, and the rankings have improved from being 100 uh, in 2017 to currently standing at 63. In fact, since we invested in 2018, already things have improved um, uh, since then, and we've seen that on the ground. Um, so lastly, whilst most of the changes in this budget are welcome, the government really needs to keep an eye on the inflation and interest rates. And for an investor like us, interest rate increases affects our financing at the project level because we use project financing debt. Exactly. Well, thank you so much for joining me, Nandita, on this video blog. And for everyone watching, please feel free to register for our newsletter to get regular updates and follow us on Twitter and you'll be able to find out all the information about UK trade and investment that's happening. A huge thank you. Thank you, Chris.